Yeah, well, we're going to get together and do some brainstorming, right? Talk about something again. Yeah? yeah. So you want me to start? Wonderful. Yeah. Have you got a delay? No. Oh, you guys are a bit. So we're going to talk about the feasts. And I've written down here the feasts were given to Moshe on Mount Sinai and were constituted to be forever, all right? They were continued until Yahushua came. After his death, Israel realised that through Yahushua, the first two feasts had been fulfilled. Yeah? Yeah. Except for tabernacles, the last feast. That's the one we're in at the moment. The understanding of the fulfilment of tabernacles comes from the prophecies. The understanding of the fulfilment of tabernacles comes from the prophecies, but particularly the revelation where Yehuchanan was given visions of what happened in heaven when Yehusha went back up there and what would be the signs of his return. These signs relate to the feasts. So the prophecies that were given um, right from the beginning, you know, by the um, patriarchs and in the revelation, all, prof all came into the feasts, didn't they? They give us an understanding of our deliverance or salvation. So no feasts, no salvation or redemption. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So it's interesting about how the feasts, by us doing them, relate to the prophecies in the Revelation. After after Yahushua finished his work here, he went to heaven. And then you hear about all the things that happened. Then you hear about his coming again. And all the time of his coming, he, the times of his coming relate to the feasts. I was speaking to a lady today on the, um, uh, Facebook. Facebook and... Um, she was saying that she was going to do the fast on, um, like I told you today, on, on Monday. But um, I don't know whether you can do that. You can just say I'm going to fast on Monday because we have the information that we have, don't we? You know, from the, from the research Lou's done, I mean, He's a ph phenomenal icon, what he's done and put out, isn't he? Yeah. You know? yeah. uh, I mean, you've helped him get all that in order, which is wonderful. But um, so we've been talking about people under the altar. Yeah. Right. They came from the tribulation. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So... They are the people that had to die for their own salvation. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Now, when you look at that, um, what, 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 what? They're crying out. Well, they're, they're under the altar crying out when, 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 when. Are they part of the bridal group? Um, are they part of the bride? No, no, they're not. Well, they are, but they've missed the wedding feast. They don't come in until later. Well, there's people that are going to be um, delivered, but they won't be part of the first fruits. Yeah, well, the people that are going to be delivered, aren't they? There's people going to, that are going to be saved, delivered. 
have redemption in the tribulation. So all them, and maybe some of the unwise, I don't know about all the unwise, because maybe they don't want to repent. So all the unwise, um, the, the ones that are left from the unwise and the ones that um, get redemption in the tribulation go under the altar. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So... <laughs> it's all right, we can edit the pauses, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, good. So when you, it doesn't matter about editing. We can just leave it as is. It's all right. My so when you look at it, do those people um, get risen in the first resurrection? No. No. No, only the ones that have overcome and are hot, the wheat. They get risen yeah. in the first one. The rest are done. None of those... People get in the, come in the first resurrection, so they don't go to the thousand years. They're they're waiting under the altar until the second resurrection. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. So to be in the bride company, you need the seal on you, don't you? Yeah. And the seal is a sign. So that the the sign that is the Sabbath, but you get the seal for protection and blessing, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And it's also the seal is there for when the reapers come. Yeah. 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 So you'll be distinguished from everybody else. So the reapers are going to take the weeds out, aren't they? Yeah. We're going to see all that yep. before the trump. I don't know if it's before. The last trumpet blows and the dead rise and the we that are living get taken up with them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't got the seal... You're, in, you're not in the bride company. No. No. So you have to be, to be in the bride company, you've got to be sealed. You've got to be doing Sabbath and the feasts. You've got to have the understanding what the feasts really represent, how they were fulfilled. Yeah. You're easy to talk to. He's <laughs> running it through his head. Now, do you think there's going to be any discrepancies in what we're saying? Uh, no, I think it's been, yeah. Um, I think it's uh, it's easy to understand when you look at the prophecies, and I think I think you've said it how it's going to be. I mean, you, you can't really state. The distance of the gaps, whether this will happen first or like it could. No, it's no sequence order. No, it could be really quick in a day, or it could take a week, or it could take. But as far as what you said, I think it's spot on. It makes sense to me. Right. So you need to be sealed. Mm. You need to be doing the Sabbath, which is the sign that you're you're in covenant relationship, and you get sealed because you're doing that. And you're doing the feast as well. If you're not doing that, you won't make it in the bride company, will you? No. no. And it's a small group. Yeah. It's not a big, massive thing, is it? No. No. But there's a lot of people that are under the altar. Yeah, there were, eh? Yeah. So they'll be risen on the second judgment. So they won't see, they won't be risen up and they won't go to the wedding feast. They won't be part of that new Jerusalem. They'll come down on earth and then the people that are left 
in the earth that will have to be taught in the thousand years. Yeah. You're going to have to wait a long time. Well, it's, it's a year is like a day. Yeah. So that's what yeah. a thousand years is going to be like. Yeah. Well, to them, yeah. Still time. Yeah. And how, how close is it? Very close. It said be there'll be um, there'll be uh, people marrying and partying and divorcing and you know living it up until he comes. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of people that are that are asleep, yeah. even though the tribulation. I mean, you look at all the things that are happening in the world to now, they're still doing all that. Yeah. And they're rioting. It's getting worse, the drugs and the disease and everything, you know. All the gays, are, 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 all that's building up and they're in all the television shows and all the movies and you, you have to respect them. The same thing. What about what that guy said on television on the news, that politician? He said, accepting the gays, does that mean in the future um, a marriage will constitute the fact that people, if they want to be married to animals, bestiality, they can do that as well? Wow. That was on the news all over Australia. Wow. He, he lost his job. Really? He was taken off the front bench because of what he said. But see what he's associating the gay thing with? Yeah. Mm. It's true. So that's how bizarre it's all getting. Yeah. He called them creepy people out there that do all these things. So this is what I, I wanted to talk about, um, this sequence. And being in the in the in the bride company, yeah. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people are aware of that today. How serious it is, and how close it is. Mm. There's definitely an urgency. Everybody's asleep. These are the redemptive plan. <laughs> don't do it. You don't. Not in it. That's right. He's going on, on his caravan. He's thinking of that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when you look at it, it's quite amazing. Do you think many people that you talk to, would they talk in this vein about this thing that's about to come upon the world? Because of all the other people that have said the end of the world is coming and they were wrong, they don't want to declare anything like that. But we're only declaring it amongst ourselves. And we're not putting a date on it or anything. We're just saying based on scripture, look at the world, it's happening. Mm. So, I don't mind declaring it. Some people will say, like Brett said to me today, those sort of things we were declaring 20 years ago. It's not the same, is it? Mm. Mm. I just wanted to know what you thought. Mm. Yeah, I think <clears throat> nobody thinks like this. They, yeah, I don't. Know. They're just too, too, too caught up in the protocol. The Messianic Protocol, you know. The and what's that? It's basically just plain circus. You just do it on, inter on the internet. Uh, everyone's trying to get a position and a reputation and a, you know, you know, it's just ridiculous. That's why it was the best experience for it to go right in there and have all these... You know, dodge experiences. <laughs> that was just you in there going, 
<laughs> when he's just in there trying to compete. Mm. Just like children. So, get a life. I think it's quite wonderful how Moshe got the feasts from Yahuwah on the mount and he instituted them and they're associated with coming out of Egypt. Yeah. You know? mm. um, and then the Passover and then the, the giving of the, the word and then we have the tabernacles. But they didn't really understand what tabernacles was so much. No. You know, she came along and went up to heaven and gave the last prophecies about it all, about his return to Yehukanon. And so we have all that. That man could still be alive in the world today. Mm -hmm. And so Lou's been doing all this research and bringing everybody into the, all the knowledge. But as you said, the protocol in the Nazarim, in the Messianics, they don't seem to be wanting to go to that place where it's that serious for themselves. I mean, if you talk to somebody, they just want to quote scripture at you all the time. You know, you can talk to people and they want to flash scripture at you and, and their self-righteousness type of thing without really considering. I don't know, do, do many people talk about this? No. No. They don't. I don't really go in with them, go in there like you do with them. I can't be bothered. At least you give them a go. But most 90% of the time you only get back. They just spit yeah, well, What comes back is a lot of upsetment, a lot of anger, isn't it? Have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you just open up to receive it, yeah. it's quite amazing and quite wonderful. Yeah. And it, you know, it cuts out so much um, unreality. Yeah. yeah. They've brought the whole freedom thing into the movement, like... Um, we're not having pastors and we're not having teachers and we're not having any of that. We're, we've got our own relationship with Yahusha and we're going to, we answer to him and, it's, you know, that's great. That's that's the whole idea. But if you don't, if you don't, um, if you're not accountable or coming under any kind of teaching or people who have been there for a lot longer than you, you get people who start declaring these cuckoo sort of things. Yahusha told me this. <laughs> Who are the elders, Mark? Who are the elders out there amongst the Nazarim or the Messianic? Have you heard of any? Have you heard of people that are elders? Well, they don't. Yeah, I'm sure there's heaps of, I don't know. Lou is, because he is one. Well, that's obvious to us. A lot of people don't accept Lou and don't want to receive his teaching. No, there's a lot of other people. It's so simple and wonderful. Yeah. Lou knows heaps of other people that have been in it as long as he has. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, but do you ever hear, I said to um, someone, who was it? They said that um, about Lou's teachings, they didn't agree. with, And I said to them, well, have you met somebody that has brought forth such a body of work um, that has that knowledge and that wisdom and that experience? Mm -hmm. have, you met, have, you, have you met anybody else that has given you what Lou's given you? And they said no, but they're saying to me, Lou's just a man. Well, I mean, we all know that, but he's a gifted man, yeah. you know, and Yahushua speaks through him. But I find a lot of people don't even want to recognise the word, the pureness of what's coming through. I mean, you can easily see it's 
Yahushua's spirit, we're not looking at the man, we're looking at the content. And the content awakens you. Do you know anybody else that has teaching that awakens you? I mean, I've heard of hundreds of people already that have read Fossilised Customs and they all rave about how wonderful it is. But they'll argue about so many other points that they've heard from other Natsurim. You know? Yeah. It's extremely frustrating being involved in it all. You've got to keep your head together, you know? Yeah. Have, you, have you heard about anybody that, and it is that patient and understanding as well, have you heard anybody about anybody else like that? No, not at all. There's lots of people that have big bodies of work, but they are <coughs> a lot more religious, a lot more either Christian or Judaistic in their approach there. But have you known, do you know any teachers, any people that... that no. No? No. Teach like Lou does it, or has a, a body of work under them like that? I don't. No. Do you get around on the um, Facebook and websites, Amy? Do you see anybody like that? Oh, no. Not that I've come across. <laughs> I don't think there is anyone out there like Lou. I don't either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why he's getting so hammered. Well, that's what I wanted to, you know, really clear up about the altar, the people that are under the altar. They don't actually, they're not part of the bride. They have to go right through to the second resurrection and they get judged from there, from the books. So only the bride company is going to, and it's a small company, is going to be Israel, is going to be his bride. Yeah. It's very serious. Yeah. I think it's extremely. No one ever wants to talk in this vein, you know. I mean, if you've got the, the sequence right in your head. I think if more people realise what you're saying about the seal, and how important it is with the Sabbath and the feast, that if they really realise, you know, they they just forget about all the other yeah. ridiculousness stuff and just concentrate on their salvation, their own salvation, because they've got to... Pass the test. They've got to, yeah, it's, it's up to them. For, they're responsible for themselves instead of you know, profounding and, you know, carrying on with trying to put out stuff and draw people in and do all that other mm. thing. It's, it's so much more important just for your own, you know, salvation, deliver to, to seal, to have yourself sealed. That's what I think. I mean, all the other arguments and the things you, you see, Mark, and, you know, what Chris sees on the internet, it's ridiculous. So ridiculous. I just haven't got time for it, but I know someone has to handle it and try and help people. But it's like they're taking up space in the airwaves, it's a waste. and they want to be recognised for declaring scriptures and declaring some teaching. Some of them go to these um, rabbis, don't they? You know, this these rabbis, these people. And they're raving about them. But well, they've got titles and they're official people, you know. But that's not what Torah is about. That's not what the Nats are about. Mm. People, when they that's, that's really interfering coming in to the Nats are teaching, isn't it? Yeah. 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 What were you going to say? Uh, just that when people come out, they're so devastated generally that um, they generally grab hold of the first semi 
sane person or something that's just the opposite to Christianity, the opposite of what they came out of. Yeah. So a lot of the times that is a rabbi because it seems more truthful because they've got the real scriptures and they've got this and <laughs> that. And so they go that way. And so that's why, like you were saying weeks ago, it was so great to find to find Lou straight off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. We're we blessed. We have to be led there. No religion. No, you have to do this and you have to do that. It's just like, here's a book, you know. Well, Mark, it says not to call anyone rabbi. Yeah. And here these people set themselves up and call themselves that and everybody's paying tribute to them and giving them the title and coming under again. Yet Scripture says not to call anyone rabbi. I'm sure they've explained that away. What part don't they understand? Yeah. <clears throat> Scripture says don't do it. What don't they understand? What part of don't don't they understand? Got that? <laughs> don't do it. What part of don't do it? Don't do they not understand? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I haven't read the theses and the <laughs> <laughs> their arguments. Well, why should that? Why should that matter? It Torah says not to call anyone rabbi, yeah. and they are calling people rabbis. Yeah. And the rabbi, the person that's called a rabbi, is lifting themselves up and enjoying it, and you know, keeping the others under it. That's not what Torah is all about. Everyone's equal. Yet that's existing amongst Nazarene messianic beliefs. Yeah. Nicolaites and spirits put people and in. They're doing all this stuff and everyone's trying to beat everybody else rather than what Victoria said, thinking of their own salvation. Yeah. Because if you're not doing the Sabbath, you're not sealed, are you? No. We need the seal on us so that when the reapers come, when do the reapers come? The reapers come. <laughs> the reapers come um, before the uh, before Yahushua comes back. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The reapers come. Is that general enough? <laughs> trumpet. Yeah. The reapers come at the trumpet. When the trumpets blasted them, blast. or do they come before? Well, they come before the fire, but <clears throat> they come around about the same time as the fire because they're pulled out and thrown in the fire. So I don't know if it's a trumpet before or after. There is a trumpet. We're going to see this. Yeah. yeah. We're going to see you in space and blow up. Yeah. So we're going to be sort of in there, supernaturally protected, from the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. That's not their real names, though, but, you know, anyway, that's them. We're going to be in, in a fire like them and we're going to be safe and yet we're going to see it. Mm -hmm. So it must be all going to be happening at once. And the harvest comes right through the bride. Mm -hmm. The unwise. Sickle. So then you've got the unwise and the wise. So when when do the wise become the unwise and the door shut? The door shut and the unwise are left out because they're told to go off. So you look at all the sequences of this, you can't really sort of put it together, but it's going to be close, isn't it? The end of the tribulation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need to be ready. Yeah, yeah. I was speaking to someone today and they didn't understand um, Hebrews 12 where he would come and he will flog people from within. He will chastise them, rebuke them mm -hmm. from within and the pain's agony as we all know. How are we going to get this across to those Nazarene that just want to throw scriptures 
and they're just living a life baking pastas and you know showing them on on the internet and they they don't they can't sort of talk like this mm. and when you see all this you're concerned you want to say well that's not the right food that food you're eating is not going to be good for your body you know mm. especially if you're overweight like me but you want to tell them just what's coming but they profess to know everything. They profess to be higher and more dignified and, and more knowledgeable. And it's a competition all the time when you talk to them. They don't meet you. Like when we have a client come in, we have to meet the client at their level and they're going to talk to us about doing something on, with their hair that's going to be sculpturing a look on their features. You have to really come down and meet them and talk to them and say, yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, great, and communicate with them. I mean, I see Lou do that, Lou and Phyllis, but I don't, I don't see many others behaving like that towards each other. You know? And yet we've got the seriousness of whether you're going to be under the altar, <clears throat> whether you're not going to make it. So the ones that in the tribulation that get that receive Yahusha, they're going to die for their own salvation, for their own deliverance. Mm -hmm. You've got the bride, the unwise virgins, that, oh, tap, 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 didn't take it seriously and were just, oh, it's all right, I can... I can do this when I want to. Yahushua knows. And this, he's into timing. Everything's got to be on time, yeah. you know. So when we look at what we, I mean, we've come out of um, a hell of a lot from Christianity to now and then studied and come through this, and we've all had each other, which has been great. We still have each other. But what about people that might individually come out? Mm. Who's going to guide them in this messianic mess? And you've got somebody like Lou that's bringing the truth through, but then again you've got to look at Yahushua's going to choose who he wants and they're going to understand. you just got to trust in that and not take responsibility for all these people, I guess. But it's so sad, so much of it is so sad, isn't it? That's what I was going to say. You're, um, I haven't met too many people who have the concern that you have, um, but it gets to the point where you, like you've been telling me stuff for 20 years, even before we were in that room, and there's only some things even <coughs> now through life's experiences and life's lessons that you real like they just start to re I realize what you meant, you know. So it'd be the same. You can talk to your blue in the face of some people, even about this natural experience and the truth and your own salvation. But until they've felt that goad <laughs> in the back of their neck in their ear, they're not really they're they're party on, mate. Um, they're playing circus. So until that, I guess that's how you know. Who's, who's, it's not a matter of lifting yourself onto levels, but like you say about the trees, you can see there's a seriousness to certain people. They, they might have joy, but there's still a very deep, like a, a mourning, like a real sorrow in there because they've had some, they've had some experiences with you, you know, like in life. Um, how do you bring forth, <clears throat> how do the fruits of righteousness come Forth. Um, bring forth the fruit of righteousness. The, the discipline. <coughs> flogging. discipline. No, not discipline, flogging. Flogging, yeah. You've got to be flogged to bring forth the fruits of righteousness. <coughs> Who's going to want to go there? No one. What is it? Well, if you tell people these simple things that they're willing to go through the process that Yahushua wants, they're going to make it. 
But you've got all these people telling you so many different things. The bride's supposed to come into unity, isn't she? Yep. <clears throat> I'm just longing to see yeah. people that are, <clears throat> are going to be in agreement. Yeah. Where are they? Where are the people that are going to meet you at that level? Not many, not many of them. Well, there's got to be a bride company, hasn't there? Yeah. Obviously, his work's not finished. How bad is the world getting? Very. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> Where are they? When are they going to say, yeah, I, I, I see, I agree? Well, they're all too hurt and offended. They're not ready for any kind of battle. They're all just still back at the camp arguing and slapping each other on the face. You know? They're not, you know. Well, we have to follow the cloud, don't we? Yeah. If he picks up and moves on, we've got to follow. We've got to... The ball's still rolling. And if you stop, <clears throat> you get left behind. Get left behind. Yeah. How do you feel about this? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I want to keep moving. And um, I know there's fresh stuff coming all the time. I want to. <clears throat> keep up. I don't want to get, you know, confused and go back to sleep. And that's what I see easy, so easily. It's it's well, that's in scripture. It tells you don't don't um, go back to sleep. <clears throat> the um, the evil ones there all the time, trying to drag his Yahushua's people away, trying to dissuade them. Put you know. Put things in your way, it says even the elite will be deceived. There's a great deception going on in, in the last days, it talks about. So I know that there's there's a fine line, you've got to stay with it. You've got to stay with Yahusha's movement. And I don't know it's very easy to go to sleep if you don't keep up. <coughs> so that's what's that's frightens me and I I don't want to lose the thread that we're on. I feel it's really important. And I think the feasts strengthen us and keep us awake because we go through so much when we go through a feast. We're just re refreshing and renewing the whole story that you, you, why Yahushua came and why he died for us and set, set us free to you know, go on a better journey. <coughs> to have a, an eventual life with him. So that's why it's just it's just so important. And a lot of people, even in that room, don't find the, the feasts important to actually follow them, to take days off, to do, you know, to do them properly. I and mean, we try every year to do it a little bit more and get more understanding and it's so incredible just to blow your head off every year. And I just find Yahushua's moving in that way. He's giving, giving us these understandings about the seal. I didn't really understand how important the seal was to see when the reapers come, they've got to identify. They identify the, the non-believers and we, we're going to be identified by the seal and protected. And the protection, oh, if you haven't got the protection, that to me is just living like dangerously, like we have been in the past, and you know all the all the dreadful trauma that we've been through, and things that have just freaked us out. We don't have to have that freak out. We can stay stay with him and be safe. It's that wonderful feeling of of being safe and knowing and protected. <coughs> Just going with 
with what he's feeding us every week, every every month we're getting this fabulous new food all the time. I just don't you think it's just so important? I find it's really important. And you know, occasionally just like I've I've found that, you know, on the Sabbath I know I I don't get into his word enough, but I know the bit that I do just refreshes and keeps me so much more on track and you just find, oh, he's just so into everything that we, you know, what we're doing. And he's, he, he wants so much more every day. I feel he wants so much more of my attention. And this is, this is part of it. <laughs> it's just insane how amazing and how <coughs> just how astute and how into it, into us he is. It's just insane to our mind how how I've thought and how I've lived is ridiculous, and to come into knowing him and getting to know him, and I mean he's just endless. So we just. Are starting at the beginning to know who he is. I haven't mean, got that much time. Yeah, and then there's people <coughs> that aren't even interested. So where do you go? You know, and they just laugh at you and think you're an idiot and a freak. And then you think of what Noah went through, and then you think, well, we're going to tell them about you know the world's coming to an end, but it's you know 2012, so that's blown. And everything's been blown out. What do you what do you say? You know, whatever you say, Satan's there. You know, just twisting it all around in your face. So, you know, just I think the just to 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 get yourself right and to love people. That's how I've found is just trying to, you know, not put out. And that's why that's why I find it's so important that we need to have ourselves right. Before you, who show I need to get myself right, and just there's so many things that he does, gives you in a day that's that's sufficient, isn't it? Just to be that person he wants you to be in front of whoever's coming, and to achieve that, and to to pass the <coughs> test on every situation. It's not easy, but that's how he's he's teaching us. I just find it amazing people aren't interested. That's, I just, I don't, Even that's a messianic. Yeah. They're interested in themselves, yeah. what they're doing, but they're not, they don't seem to be interested in Yahushua, do they? No. No, it's, it's very sad because they have the truth, they have the scriptures, they have everything, it's all there in front of them, but it's too simple. It's just too simple for them to to grasp and to accept his his way, his love, his his you know sacrifice. It's too simple just to have, but that's it. <coughs> They've always got to have more and do more and you know blow it into you know uh, organisation. <laughs> yeah. You've got five kids. So it's got to be simple. <laughs> how, much, how much time have you got to love people? You know? And if you do, where are the ones you can love? Have you found any? <clears throat> what do you think of all this, Miss Amy? Um, yeah, just. Then when Victoria was talking about how Natsurim are so into themselves, I thought of um, all the people, not, I shouldn't say all, but a lot of the Natsurim and Messianic people have come across are more self-involved than most Christians I've met, like, mm -hmm. because it's, because they're unique and different, so they want to... It's all about themselves and what they think about everything. Their opinion's more important than scripture. Yeah. You know? And that's 
<laughs> that's I don't know just if that's the culture of Facebook in in general, but that's what it is, you know. Like I've had to get half of them off my wall because I just can't stand another person's opinion about themselves and what they think this <laughs> says. Instead yeah. of like Victoria said, it's simple and no one can handle that. Mm. So people try to complicate it so mm. that it makes them look like a scholar. <laughs> mm. And so it's nice that it's so simple. Mm. But, yeah, like I'm just thinking now when we're sitting here talking that <laughs> with everything that's gone on the last couple of weeks in our life, I've been so caught up and busy that I, I was just thinking. Well, of course. I mean, who should understand that? You're still going through a process to come out into a process and then, of course, you're going to be aware of him and, you know, you can concentrate on the details. But you're just going through his process anyway to get there. He understands that, don't Yeah, I know, but I can feel that difference. Like, um, <clears throat> like I still like, notice everything that he's doing because I can see how it's all working. Like, constantly it's just like, oh, that's Yahusha, that's Yahusha. Isn't it fabulous? Oh, it's wonderful. But I yeah. feel like the busier I've gotten, even though I can still look at it and go, that's Yahusha, that's Yahusha, and thank him and all that sort of thing, I feel like I've gotten so wrapped up in details of things sometimes that I get too caught up in it. And there's a different feeling, you know, it just even in the family and in everything that we're doing. It's called chaos. <laughs> yeah, it's not just chaos, but everyone's a bit more tense. Everyone's a bit more at each other's throats. Mm. Like, your family and his family. No, no, just in our little, <laughs> just, our little oh, family. Yeah, yeah. Just, it's a different feeling when you feel like when our focus has been on something else. Yeah. And it would be nice when we get through this phase and to have a different lifestyle to go, to be back, to be into him and be into the scripture a lot more because it's just a much... I don't know, it's so much more peace in the house and in the family and joy and everything and everything and everyone when yeah. we're like, you know, more into scripture and stuff. Yeah. So I'm noticing that. Yeah. And now just sitting here now, I'm realising that's what it is that I've noticed happening in the last week's gotten more and more wor like worse, like more tense and... Yeah. Um, and just busy and stuff, but I just am realising that that's what it is, like I've just noticed now. Mm. How's the um, you were always on my mind going? Uh, I haven't checked in on that. <laughs> the next one. No. You're what feeling. you're saying to her. How's that <laughs> going? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's been back tense. And it's, back and it's back and forward because it's... Well, yeah, it's been I, I uh, make sure I'm always on his mind. I annoy him that much. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, it's been intense, this whole process. Like, yeah. um, because Mark's focus has been on this, being in the salon and getting stuff done <laughs> and my focus has been on preparing and I've had lists and... And if you buy something that's not on the list. <laughs> oh, you're not, Mark. You <laughs> naughty boy. Good on you. You've got to keep tabs. <laughs> Try to be nice because I know it's just his excitement and I want him to be excited. But mm. I have to very gently say, but that wasn't on the list. But it's solar powered. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it oh, Mark's buying it, not yeah. you. No, Mark, I have a list. Oh. And if it's not on the list, we don't buy it. If I find something in the solar power, mate. And it has to go through a vetting process to get onto the list, you know. Because... You're not going to need all those things um, so much when you're just going down south. You can always pick up those things on your way later on. Instead of carting it all with you, you have the knowledge of it. When you're going to go over to Perth and through... Or the desert, or then, yeah, maybe. Anyway, I don't know. <clears throat> this is, down the south coast doesn't, it's pretty all tarred, isn't it? Everything everywhere. I suppose not if they're freebies, though. <clears throat> mm. So we're back on this lifestyle now. <laughs> Keep to the list. <laughs> 
Yeah, we felt the difference, but it's still, it's still <laughs> exciting what we're going into. Oh, it's wonderful what you're going to experience. Look forward to it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I just meant we got back onto the camping subject. <laughs> we were talking about something else. <laughs> we can't keep you out of the camping subject. You're too excited. <laughs> You're always on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So what do you think we're going to do about this circumstance, about contacting the bride? Where is she? <laughs> <clears throat> How do you know who it is? You know by the mark. By their fruit. Yeah. But when when do you see it? You see it occasionally. Do you? Where? I I sometimes I'll meet somebody online and I'll go, oh, this is this person. Like you don't expect it, you're not even waiting for it, you're just you're just expecting it to be another name. But uh, they'll just start saying things and you start having a bit of a rapport with them and then you might Skype them <coughs> and you just go, this person gets it. This person gets it. I haven't, I haven't met anyone like that yet. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't been on it that much, you know, just talking to a few, but I haven't met people that are really, you know, into uh, this point. Oh, into this point? No. People don't think it's right to talk like this. That's the thing. Why, oh, really? Is that true? Yeah, that's why when you said to me, do a, do a thing and be honest with them and, and, and tell them about what you did with your marriage. And, and like, that's fine with me. We talk about it. It's open, fine. But, and you were saying it'll blow so many people's brains out. And I'm thinking, why? Why? But it has. It has. Yes. You're shocked. Can I? I have. Yeah, tell me. Tell me. <coughs> I have a friend who I met uh, like through Weight Watchers things years yeah. ago, and she lives she lives in Castle Hill now. Anyway, she said uh, the only thing I ever think I think I put on Facebook a link to the kids doing the kneel at his throne thing, and she watched that and she must have subscribed to must have then subscribed to the channel. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she just so happened to mention the other day that she'd watched that clip about Mark and I talking about her marriage <laughs> and, oh, my goodness, it's had a massive impact on her because she's in a relationship. Like her, she's not married but she wants to marry him but he won't marry her. And But um, he, but she's been upset, you know, with like what they've been going through. And when, after she's watched that now she's trying to, like, get things into order, like with them and work things out mm -hmm. with him and... And do stuff, but you know, like she was sitting there apparently cooking dinner, watching watching us talking about that thing, and because um, she mentioned she's mentioning things like she, I, don't, I think she's watched them more than once. My goodness, she's just mentioning things to me today because she came over today, and I'm thinking, I said to her, "How did you know that?" And she goes, oh, "I saw it in your video," and I was like, "Oh my goodness, I don't remember saying that in the video," and so. Um, Oh, oh, you should have watched it again, I think. But, um, like, yeah, and this is just a friend who, like, she doesn't, she doesn't have any religious beliefs whatsoever. Like, she's just whatever. And she's watched this and it's had an impact on her. So I was shocked at that. Isn't that wonderful? That's it's fabulous. It's so exciting. Eh? It cuts the hill. Yeah. And it's gone all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was, did you see the comment from Lauren? No. Saying Lauren, Harry's Lauren. Oh, uh, no. Saying that they were really impacted by it and so thankful for the honesty and everything because they just got married. Harry, oh, that's you great. know Harry and his his yeah, wife, yeah, yeah. they just got married and yeah. they watched it and they loved it and were so thankful for it and oh, all this good. stuff they're gonna have experience. So, yeah. so it was nice. <laughs> Then there was there was Hector. He couldn't believe it because it's just uh -huh. like just like telling his own story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, it's really, 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 very helpful. You know. <laughs> but uh, I just think, you know, where is everybody? You know, where where are asleep. they? Asleep. You know? Totally asleep. Well, this really got to me. Uh, how the feasts 
were given way back when, you know, 2,000, more than that, isn't it? 4,000 years ago now. Yeah, three and a half, 4,000, yeah. yeah. And they were designed for then, and they still didn't have the full understanding. They had to be obedient, otherwise they wouldn't have got it. Yeah. And yet, everything that happened that Yahushua did, coming down to earth then going back to heaven and fulfilling all that, and then speaking to Yehurkanen through by his spirit and telling him to write down what he's going to do when he's going to come back, and yet everything in the feasts relate to that. That's amazing. And it was given three and a half thousand years ago. Yeah. And the prophecies from the patriarchs before that were given. Yeah. And it's still the same. Yeah. You know? Wouldn't you, be, wouldn't you have a, a rush for the bride company? What do you think's in the way? Have you thought about what's stopping everybody from panicking and going, oh my goodness, I've got to get, I've got to get. There. And they put everything off to get there to achieve it. So what do you think's in the way? A whole series of delusions, <laughs> strongholds and false, you know, she'll be right, mate. That's the Australian one, but just oh you who should love. <coughs> who should understand. Yeah, he does understand. He said to be obedient. You know, like there's there's so many the the, the whole thing of humanism I know humanism isn't supposed to be in this realm, in this natural movement. It's a different movement, but it's got to be cleansed from it, hasn't it? It's in the bride. The bride's got to be cleansed, so it's in the bride. What is it? What is it the bride has to be cleansed of? The self. What's in the way? Satan's in there. What's more precious than rubies? Truth, the Torah, a good word. The wisdom of Yahuwah. Yeah. yeah. So what's everybody want? Wisdom. No. Knowledge. Knowledge. No. What's more precious than? Oh, they want money. Rubies. Bling. Rubies. <laughs> They want ruby, huh? They want ruby on their finger, on their ears, and ran here. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what's in the way, what the world can offer. I mean, if you watch, you watch the news and um, the ice caps have melted more than they ever have in this last... Um, some of they've had up there. So there's less ice up there than there's ever been, you know. And all these other things that are happening and the world's just disintegrating. They want to dig down and get into the, the gas in the earth. And if they get into that, it's going to go into the water troughs that are under the land and kill the water, destroy it. So many things that are just dying out that everyone's not told about. Yeah. I mean, that's just a coincidence. What? That's just a coincidence. Oh. <laughs> There's an answer for everything. <laughs> so what's in the way? Satan. Money. Money. Ruby. Ruby's there. What the world's offering. Yeah. The clothes, the silks, the homes, the swimming pools, the cars, everything's super duper. Everyone's zooming in onto Hollywood yeah. and wanting Hollywood. It holds much more to their affections than this reality we're talking about. And yet the personification of love is Yahushua himself. Yeah. He's the force, the stream of love, the force 
comes from him and he created us to receive it and manifest it. Huh? And that's the love that's what he wants. So we, we have to have a bride that understands that those rays of love coming into us so she can emanate them to whoever so they will see. Her eyes have to be like, you know, shining so they can, people can feel and see. We have to come down like you do to a client. You have to come down and love. You know? I don't hear people talking like this or have the concern. I don't know whether I'm just imagining it, but I don't get to see many people, really. <clears throat> That's just it. People are left to their own devices and their own strange methods and imaginations because we don't have to, don't have to be part of the service. We don't have to come under one person's you know, way of doing something. We can all do it our own way, but it's not, it shouldn't be like that. It should be under you, his way. <laughs> And he, he has a certain behaviour and a certain path. Victoria's um, <clears throat> said to me that um, people, you know, you have to understand people aren't with you who should they don't understand. We have to be considering that all the time. I, I sort of, sorry? No, go on. I sort of think, I said to her, look, we're all human and we all, we heard Yahushua, we turned that way. Everyone has a choice yeah. to listen and receive within and come alive or reject. And I think that's what's going through the world now. I think we should be aware, so much more aware of who's rejecting and who's not so that we can have sanity, so that we can have peace. We can, we meet somebody, you talk to them and they're not open, they're not ready, they, they don't want it. So you don't judge them or anything, you're angry at them or whatever, you, re, you, you just love them, you know. It's insane what's going on. I don't see many people concerned like that for each other. And that's what the bride's all about, isn't she? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, people aren't, they're too busy, they haven't got time to put themselves out. Their whole routine is <coughs> so full. How could you? How could you have time to have someone over and chat to them? Or yeah, it's that concern. How does this topic make you feel, Mark? Um, like I can see, I haven't had a lot of concern in the past, and it's <laughs> it's always a matter of believing whether you're wasting your time with somebody or if you are. <clears throat> That's just feeling the feeling, I guess, and listening to you, Isha. So that's fine. That's different. That's, you, you get better at that. But hitting the road and that's going into a new experience, that's where we're hopefully going to be meeting lots of people. I mean, Lauren said yesterday, you go to carrying parks and apart from costing a lot of money and having so many <coughs> rules and everybody's tight together, she said, they're all snobby. They don't talk to you. They're all doing their own thing. She said, you go to the to the free spots and everyone's just partying up. They just want to talk and communicate and they're all just there having a great time. So I thought, oh, that's a great thing. Mm. That, that'll be more, you know, conversations, I'm guessing, you know, mm. relationships. So mm. We're totally blown out. We don't know what to expect. That's why we're kind of <laughs> over-preparing in some areas and under-preparing and we'll get out there and we'll go, oh, we over-prepared this and under-prepared that, but we don't have a clue how it's going to be really. Don't have a clue. You know, so, but I do know life is going to slow down a lot. 
Like, because you can't just go on tap, you can't just go on, you know, everything's going to be a lot slower. And, but that's good in itself, you know, just more time with everybody. And life's, life will be a lot cheaper, but it'll be a lot, it'll be harder work and more time consuming. But it'll be just, uh, yeah, you really don't have a clue. But to answer your question, <laughs> It's, uh, we went camping again. We went camping again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just t taken you over. Of course it has. You're going to have compassion for people. You're going to be excited to meet people and share. Yeah, I haven't been. I haven't been. I, I just wanted to be a virtual entity. I wanted to be a virtual personality. I was safe there, you know. I could I could disclose what I wanted to put out what I want to put out. I was protected. Um, Is that with um, the computer, Facebook, and all that virtual entity? Virtual, yeah. Everybody, that's what everybody is. They're just a name. They don't, you know, they don't really care. It's just a name. <coughs> who you who, who you portray online? That's why people can't handle you because you just come on there and. But I have no understanding about the um, protocols. Yeah, I have no understanding. I just thought, you know, people coming in asking me to be friends, I don't even know you. What do you want to be my friend for? <laughs> and then I find out the computer recommends them to you. I'm going, oh, all right. <laughs> I have this conversation. None of them hardly ever answered me anyway. <laughs> And I'm stuck in, you talk about virtual reality, I'm stuck in there with all this entity, all this stuff happening. Oh, crackers. I mean, you've got to find your way through the madness. Some people told me about you've got to stay in the thread. And I realised down the side of your computer you've got all these pictures of people and you can press them and get into a conversation with them. I only just found that out last week. And I couldn't, I don't know what the hell, where's the thread? And I kept asking you where the thread is. Yeah. And, you know, you talk, people <clears throat> talk to you, it comes on your email and you can press to where the conversation goes and you go there and you answer it and it ends up in someone else's thing. I'm just going, oh, what is this? Uh, you're out there. Why don't they have rules to say this is what you do? On Facebook, this is how Facebook works. Instruction manual. <laughs> yeah, maybe well, we'll... I'm sorry for being a blunderbust. I just don't understand. And then all that posting and stuff. I said, don't these people understand Phyllis and Adam just want people to communicate with each other without posting? What about all that? If they don't post, they've got nothing to say. <laughs> Well, that's what I mean, you know. Yeah, you I talk to some, them. you know, I talk to some people. Then you go through, then you look in another day. You, they've answered you. Then you look somewhere else, and they're there. They are on someone else's Facebook, quoting scriptures again, going for it. You know, you think, oh, <laughs> you know, they don't want to talk, do they? People don't want to talk. Be real, and I think this is where the bride's got to go. We have to see, you know. So many people want to um, meet people that have come into the messianic experience and they want to make friends with them, mm. you know. But that's not the calling, is it? And to look for that all the time, to look for a group, to be part of a group, that's not the calling. That's what our mind's been trained into, the Christian mindset. But you go out and you give the word, mm -hmm. preach it, you know, tell the people. That's what we're all supposed to be doing and seeing fruit. <clears throat> if you're on Facebook and having a particular... You're going to tell me something? No, I'm just saying... I need a pen to write it there. <laughs> If you're on if you're on Facebook all the time portraying a certain image of yourself, you're not having a life. So you can't talk openly and honestly because this is your life right here, doing what you're doing. 
<laughs> from personal experience, you're not having a life. Everything in your real life is being uh, uh, neglected. Is that what you had? Yeah. Yeah. I just, I look at Hector and he's going to Hector, isn't he? He's just posting and posting and posting. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone and everyone. Yeah. Just boom, 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 boom. I'm going to go. go. I'm going to say good night. Love you, Victor. <laughs> Love you. No, he's going to bed. He wants to go to bed. Yeah. What is the time? 20 to 10. How long have we been going? No, about an hour, hour and a half. And a half. Well, from personal experience, you feel like, particularly when you come into this experience, you're a nothing and a nobody, and you feel like if you don't produce something, um, you're useless. Even though you've got a wife and children who want you and love you, that's not good enough. You need to be seen as doing something righteous, like that's, that's going to affect people, you know? Is that how you feel? Yeah, definitely. Because I didn't feel like I had much of a personality, or, you know, and I was in a depression. <coughs> and, uh, you know. Well, the miracle of Lou came along. He gave you what you needed. You heard she knew what your heart wanted. But he gave you what he what he wanted. Yeah. <clears throat> could you think do you ever think you could be that busy again? No. I mean that was busy. That was very busy. I mean it's great now the website's working, isn't it? People can look up whatever they wanted. It's wonderful. Yeah. I think that should save them a lot of talking, the way you've designed that for them. I can say go to this article, go to that article, get back to me. Yeah. No? Definitely. Anybody said anything to you about it? No. no. A lot of hard work went into that, Mark. That Didn't it, mate? Oh, oh, my goodness. It's there. As Amy said, everything takes a while to get off the ground. So... You know, it's true. When she first set up the Torah Institute um, page on Facebook, she wanted it to be a big bang and, you know, oh, it's all here and da da da. And it took, it's been over a year, I think. Um, and there's a lot of people there who post stuff and everybody's in on it. It just takes, yeah. just takes a while because there's so much stuff on the, on the airwaves. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you go there and you look at that and you think, who am I? What use am I going to make in this? How am I going to reach people? So I don't think that's the way to go, is it? You know, unless you're, I don't know, housebound or something. You can, but you can go out and meet people and communicate that way, be more effective. You know, I don't think a lot of people feel love through a Facebook relationship. Thing about it is, you don't reach the lost in that anyway. You, you're preaching to the choir. You're preaching. You, you, well, you are. You're talking to each other. Mm. It's inward. It's internal. You're not going out because non-Christians aren't going to log on. To, uh, Non-Christians, non-believers aren't going to log on to, you know, the Nazarim sites, the Nazarim pages. They might stumble across something, you know. Generally, but most of the people that we've found have been affected by the videos and things like that are. People have come out of Christianity. That's a good thing. Mm. Like, oh, I was so amazed. Thank you for this natural. <coughs> Thank you for telling us what the natural are. We found the truth. It's amazing. Mm. And everything that one. That's great. But, but Christianity is sort of halfway in the door anyway. But it's um, as far as reaching the lost, you know, it's, got to be a, it's kind of got to be a one. It's got to be of him, hasn't it? Yeah. It's got to be obviously. It's got to be of him. Something that Lou said to me, uh, I mean, sorry, in one of his articles, <coughs> I mean, he said that Israel was scattered into the seed of mankind. Yeah. Like, you know, when they were scattered, there's still, there's still people that say they're from this tribe and from that tribe. But it makes so much more sense to see because of their unrepentance 
and their willfulness, 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 willfulness not to follow Torah, but, you know, it makes sense that he scattered them into the human race. So the seed of Israel is there. So it makes sense to me that anyone can be called out. I just thought that was incredible understanding. Yeah. You just need to be woken up. It's just, to me, that's incredible. That's where they went. That's where Israel went. You know? And the ones that were, um, when there was a scattering, they, they went to America and they were the Red Indians, yeah. you know, and the Amazons and all those sort of things that have just been scattered into the sea of mankind. Yeah. And they've been like that since, the, since he divorced them. Now he's calling them back. He wants a bride and he's going to those people there with real, real hearts yeah. that uh, really want him. It's an incredible story. We went to see Resident Evil, yeah. you know, and that's just pathetic. The end of the show, <clears throat> the guy brings her out and says, this is what's confronting us, and you get zoomed right out, and there's dragons flying around with big mouths and teeth, and all the people are all those zombies, you know. They're all coming where they are and the place where they are it's all built a, a fence, a big wall all around it, is the White House. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> and she, remember when they took the genes out of her and made it normal? Yeah. Well, they, they put them all back into her and she was the weapon. Uh, so she yeah. was the one that was going to go out and kill them all. <laughs> Just yeah. madness, you know. And when you look at the story we've been talking about, how fascinating, fabulous, wonderful and amazing. We were talking about this on the way home. Victor said, why doesn't someone get together and make a movie of all this? And I said, probably because they haven't got the sequence of it. <laughs> yeah, they don't have time or the money. <laughs> yeah. mm. A lot of money. Well, how do you think we went? Oh, amazing. Think it was a good choice, a good conversation? Yeah. Yeah, it's so important. Tell us what you think, brothers and sisters, how you feel about this chat between us. We love you. We're going to say good night. Good night. Good night. I'm going to bed too. I'm getting tired. All right. I enjoyed that. I wanted to get all that off my chest. Yep. I'm sorry to interrupt the camping mindset. <laughs> no, it's good. It's more important. You're going to hang up on me? Yeah, I'll hang up on you. I love you, mate. I love you too. See you later. There's too many buttons to look at to press. If you cut me off, it's right. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.